this all. Yes. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Lee Chapel. I'm Frank Rizzo, director of the Lee Family Digital Archive. On behalf of the archive and the chapel, I want to welcome you to the 2011 Washington Lee Spring Speaker Series. Uh, I want to especially thank Linda Dahm and the staff for opening up the chapel today and for the next two Sundays and for helping with the assistance and preparation of this program. Uh, this might be a good time for you to turn off your cell phones so you won't get embarrassed later. I've already got mine off. The theme of this year's program uh, is to explore the lives of George Washington and Robert E. Lee to, uh, with an emphasis on men themselves, on their character, their relationships, their experiences, generally with a focus on were they prepared to go to war or how well they were prepared to go to war in the two great or I count the French and Indian War, three great wars that uh, they participated in. We have six speakers over three days, two today, two next Sunday, and two the following Sunday. Today we have two fine historians, Bill Calhoun and Jack Davis. Bill is Professor Emeritus of National Security and Decision Making at the U.S. Naval College. And Jack Davis is Professor of History and Director of Programs for the Virginia Center for Civil War Studies at Virginia Tech. Next week we have two uh, speakers who are top in their field in uh, museum management. We have locally Colonel Keith Gibson, Director of BMI Operations, Museum Operations, and Dennis Pogue, Associate Director for Mount Vernon. I encourage you to come back next week and also bring your friends. Two weeks from now we have Ed Lingle, Director and editor of the George Washington Papers, a fine military historian, and David Cox, another local person who's writing a book on Robert E. Lee and his religion. Um, our first speaker today, Bill Calhoun, was a professor at the Naval War College for 22 years, an active duty officer and a civilian professor. He always included classes on George Washington uh, in his uh, teaching class entitled George Washington, Indispensable Man or Indecipherable Monument. I like that title. He's also the author of Washington at New York, along with numerous articles, opinion pieces, and book reviews on George Washington. He also served at the War College as Dean of Academics and Acting Provost, and his career in the Navy included 27 years as a captain. Today his talk is entitled George Washington, Preparedness, through change. For the first time here at the chapel, I'd like to welcome Bill Calhoun. faculty member, my brother Sam, and our brother Marcus, and other members of our family, which includes our wives, <laughs> and classmates of mine from Annapolis, is a distinct honor to me. I'm a real admirer of Frank Grizzard and greatly enjoy his books on Washington, especially 143 questions and answers about George Washington. After this afternoon, if you know 144 things about Washington, you'll be fortunate and maybe not will be too. To be in this historic chapel, which honors yet another great Virginian, is a hugely meaningful experience and privilege, especially as Dr. Davis is here to speak about Robert E. Lee. When I realized that I was speaking with an eminent historian, Dr. Davis, 
the movie The King's Speech came immediately to my mind, and I thought of myself as King George VI having his talk right before Winston Churchill was coming. Or after Ben and I arrived in Lexington on Friday, we were talking to my nephew Ben, who's also here, who pointed out that Dr. Davis had written or edited over 50 books on the Civil War. I almost got a lady one more that had it back to Rhode Island on the spot. And then I realized that between the two of us, we averaged 25 books. <laughs> so, I, so I thought, well, that's not so bad. As most of you might have experienced, being introduced and then the speaker any function can cause anybody to be a bit nervous and sensitive. Dr. James Robertson, Jr., alumni distinguished professor of history at Virginia Tech, eminent biographer of Stonewall Jackson, and of course his colleague of Dr. Davis, with whom he authored and edited the great Virginia at War series, gave the best talk at the Naval War College I heard there for more than 23 years in the faculty. And you know how professors in the faculty can sometimes be, so I heard a lot of talks. Dr. Robertson noted that President William Howard Taft was extremely sensitive about two things, his weight and long-winded introduction. At some 365 pounds with a 54-inch waist, you can understand he might not like to squirt around in a small chair on a platform in front of the public. And picture this just for a moment, 365 pounds on perhaps a small folding chair. Once the president was subject to a lengthy introduction at the Law Law Historian in New York City by Mr. Chauncey DePue, the chairman of the New York Central Railroad. As the introduction went on and on, presidents looked more and more unhappy. And after what seemed like forever, Mr. DePue finally began to conclude with, ladies and gentlemen, our honored speaker is pregnant with wit, pregnant with statesmanship, and pregnant with diplomacy. I give you the President of the United States, William Howard Taft. The President stood up with a scowl on his face, but then a smile began to spread across those massive jowls, and he said as he patted his enormous belly, if it's a boy, I shall name him George Washington Taft. If it's a girl, I shall call her Martha Washington Taft. And if, as I suspect, it's only gas, I will name it Chauncey DePue. 